In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Eturia and Trachonitis, and Lysanias was tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. The word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written, in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Something momentous is happening. The historical people who are named here are actually accurate. These people were ruling and reigning at this particular time. It was the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar. Pontius Pilate was governor, Herod the Tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip of another area actually to the east, Lysanias was the Tetrarch of Abilene, Annas and Caiaphas were high priests in Jerusalem. The word of the the word of God came to John in the desert. The word of God came to John in the desert. And then the great quote from the prophet Isaiah. Who was John? Well, we know he was the son of Elizabeth and Zechariah. We know that when Elizabeth in her old age was pregnant with John, we know that Mary, who was pregnant with Jesus, went to help her. It's the feast of the visitation of Mary. We know that while he was a relative of Jesus, his mission, while tied to Jesus, was a bit different. John was called by God in the desert where he was preaching spiritual renewal of people. That's what his preaching was about. Get right with God. Get yourself. You know what the prophets have said. You know what the Old Testament have said, has said. Get yourself in the right relationship with your God. Repent of the things that keep you from being in that right relationship with your God. And then his main mission. He will be the one when 
some of John's disciples come and others are gathered around him, Jesus, he comes to an area where John is and John points to him and says, you can read about this especially in the Gospel of St. John, he says, behold the Lamb of God, that one, that is the one you should be following, not me. It's about him coming. He is the one the world has been waiting for. Follow him. And they do. It's interesting that our first reading from Baruch, Baruch, by the way, is, was uh, the prophet Jeremiah's scribe, writer, recorder, if you will, who becomes a prophet himself on the death of Jeremiah. Baruch talks about this same kind of theme. Isaiah is the one that is quoted in, in the gospel passage. Same kind of message. This one coming, this Messiah, is the Lord. You must, you must prepare the way for him. Make straight a path, fill in a valley, lower a mountain or a hill. Winding roads get straightened out, rough ways smooth. We've got to do that in order for that Lord to come easily into our hearts, into our lives. The prophets kept trying to tell Israel this. You know what they did? They put their confidence, they put their confidence in themselves. They were a puny little nation of little significance. No great armies, no nothing. Constantly trampled by neighbors from the north, and neighbors from the West, from what today we call Syria and Egypt, constantly trampled between those two huge, powerful parties at this time. They were nothing. And God chose to come <laughs> through nothing. It's marvelous. They chose to put their faith in their leaders. They, they chose to put their faith in leaders who were constantly bargaining with the North and the West. Constantly bargaining with these two. Playing one off the other. Making treaties and this and that and whatever. Leave us alone, you can walk through this country, we won't care a bit. Well, they'd go through it anyway, whether you like it or not. Constantly conniving. And in the midst of all of it, the one thing they did, for certain, they abandoned God as part of their personal as well as national lives relied on themselves. John the Baptist and Mary are our two Advent symbols. Two people who loom large in the New Testament as Advent people, people who realize the need for openness to God, people who realize that we drift from that. Most of us, I, I honestly think most of us don't walk away from God. I mean, I think being here is a good, pretty good indication of that. 
but we drift. We go to sleep. It becomes less important. He becomes less important. He has less of an impact on my life. After all, work is very important. Family is very important. School is very important. All these things in our lives that take up our precious time. And the easiest thing to let slip is our soul. Because we feel no immediate impact from it, it becomes what we can give up. It's why the church in its wisdom gives us Advent every year and Lent every year, even more seriously in Lent, a penit more of a penitential season. But it's why we get Advent. Wake up. Where does he need to come to you? We're going to celebrate his birth again on Christmas. He's already been here. It's just a remembrance of it. When you remember it this year, where does he need to come into your heart and soul in a deeper way? Where do you need to restore him in your life? Where does he need to come in your mind, in your heart? What needs to be, what mountain or mohill or mountain or a hill we've made out of a mohill, out of a little tiny bump, we've made this enormous barrier to God to come in. We've, uh, we've gotten way off track. Our road is like a winding road up the side of a mountain, probably down the side of a mountain. Where have we gotten pretty rough? Not very smooth, not smooth ways. What holes have we dug in our lives and we hide in them and we resist God's movements in us to change, to grow, to get beyond where we are. What clutter lives in my heart and soul that I need to push out of there? Just, I mean, it's not a room, I know, but to, to make God more part of my day-to-day -day life. God wants no more than that from us. The, if, we, if we match his desire for us, he'll do the rest. And his grace will come and we will know it. But first, we must be open. We're on the second week of Advent. It's a very short season. Actually, only about 20 days left. Open. Prepare the way of the Lord within you.